Hi everyone, in today's tactics video I'm going to take a look at the sponsor and weapons and vehicle accessories for the Lehman Russ battle tank. This is in follow-up to another video I did on the turret weapons of the Lehman Russ and you can check out that video in this link here. A bit about my channel, I cover everything Astra Miller time including hobby, tactics and lore, so please subscribe for more. So if you've watched any of my other tactics videos, you should be bored by now about my conversation of the statistical impact of the Astra Militarum's Blizzard skill of 4+. This means on average half of our shots would land. So two heavy bolters firing together six shots, three would hit on average, or a 50% chance. And if a tank commander on Blizzard skill of 3+, did the same thing, four shots would hit on average, or a 67% chance. So keeping this in mind will help you better plan your firepower and know which required to completely destroy an enemy unit. Now this is doubly important with the Lehman Russ battle tank because it's carrying what essentially are four separate weapon systems, be it a turret weapon and three sponson weapons. Add on a pintle mounted weapon and a hunter killer missile and you've suddenly got six weapon systems. You want to get good at effectively splitting your firepower with the Lehman Russes, especially given the 9th edition point increases they're now adding up to be a fair chunk of points in your army list. Now this is no different to any other multi-weapon model in 40k, but it's vitally important for Ash Militarum, given we're a very heavy, shooty-focused army. Now before we get into the options, let's quickly cover some key rules that impact our decision-making process when choosing our spots and weapon. You will no doubt know by now the 9th edition rule Big Guns Never Tire, which allows non-blast weapons to fire models in the 1-inch engagement range. And if you played 8th edition, remember the horror of your opponent locking Lehman Rice into melee early on, and it being unable to shoot for the rest of the game. So if big guns never tire, do you take strictly non-blast weapons, ensuring you can shoot enemy models that are in melee with your Lehman Rust? Regimental doctrine should also be considered, as they can really boost these heavy weapons. Now I wouldn't recommend choosing a regimental doctrine only for your sponsor and weapons, but more choose sponsor and weapons that work with the regimental doctrines you've chosen to maximize the main weapon systems of your units. For example, if you've taken gunnery experts to maximize the number of shots from your basilisk or manticore, plasma cannons could benefit from this. Likewise, if you've chosen gunnery experts, multi-melters could benefit, with their range extended from 24 inches to 30 inches. And never forget the shot edge relentless. For one command point, it will take your wounded Lehman Russ on a Dragata profile and allow it to shoot as if it was on full wounds. A fantastic stratagem that can squeeze out more damage from a tank on its last legs. So let's get into the weapons themselves. Two basics to start. There are three front sponsor options and four side sponsor options. The side sponsors come in a pair, so you can't take a different one on each side. They must be the same. Taking the side sponsors is also optional and don't actually take them. I personally always do take them though, but if you're looking to trim points, this is a way to do so. And as mentioned before, with the 9th edition point increases, a fully kitted out Lehman Russ is actually a fair chunk of points, sitting in at least 200 points. So there is definitely merit in the idea of not taking side sponsors to keep the point cost down. Right, so the front sponsor options are Heavy Bolt at 15 points, Heavy Flamer at 15 points, and a Laz Cannon at 20 points. If you don't already know, both the Heavy Bolt and Heavy Flamer have been beefed up in 9th edition. The Heavy Bolt are moving from a flat 1 damage to a flat 2 damage, and the Heavy Flamer increasing its range from 9 inches to 12 inches. Now, both of these upgrades are excellent, in particular the increased Heavy Flamer range, which means it can always be used in Overwatch. As in 8th edition, its 9 inch range meant it couldn't target models beyond 9 inches who could charge. As to which of the three to use, firstly the Les Cannon must always be used with caution. Clearly a heavy one profile means you've got a 50% chance of hitting on the single shot. So think over the course of 5 turns, only 2.5 hits would occur in a game. I only typically give Blizzard Cannons to my tank commanders with Blizzard Skill of 3+, and I always equip Knight Commander Pask with Blizzard Skill of 2+, with one, as he's always got a good chance of hitting. If you're playing smaller sized games, and consequently on a smaller table size, the Heavy Flamer is a good choice. It's automatic hits, Clearly removed my discussion around this is skill of 4 plus, and of course can toast enemy units in a 1 inch engagement range. Don't forget that shooting at enemy units in the engagement range actually incurs a minus 1 to hit penalty, which doesn't affect auto hitting weapons. 
and of course heavy bolter is always a safe bet. 36 inch range and a flat 2 damage make it pretty flexible. For my standard Lehman Russes, I usually always equip them with feed bolters, and as said I keep the less cannon for tank commanders only. So now onto the side sponsons. Here I should pause and explain my school of thought. Ultimately what should determine which weapons you go for comes down firstly to the type of opponents you're usually up against, and secondly what your main turret weapon is. Your sponson weapon should work in harmony with your turret weapon. If you're up against a stabby focused army like orcs, and you've got a battle cannon which contains the blast keyword, do you bring a heavy flammer and heavy bolter in the side sponsons? Or if you're up against Tau who have no interest of getting into melee, you could bring plasma cannons with a blast keyword in the side sponsons as the Lehman Rust probably won't get locked into the fight phase. So the side sponson weapon options are heavy bolter pair costing 30 points, heavy flamer pair costing 30 points, two plasma cannons costing 40, and two multi multis costing 50 points. We've clearly covered both the heavy bolter and heavy flamer, so brief comments here are that taking all of the same weapons in the side and front sponsons makes things really easy from a gameplay point of view. If for example you had three heavy bolters, you'd be rolling nine dice at once, given all stats obviously the same. If you're playing a smaller table size, then three heavy flamers could be actually quite effective. Strength 5, AP-1, will always do a good job against infantry. And against vehicles, the guaranteed hits means you'll be taking a lot of dice into the 5 to wound. Now the plasma cannons for me are a strong contender. AP-3 means against most infantry and vehicles, your opponent is rolling a 6 to save. Strength 7 is excellent, and Strength 8 flat 2 damage gives great flexibility. Of course, you want to have a way to reroll any ones to avoid taking more for wounds, and the decision to supercharge should consider how the wound roll is changed. If, for example, you're targeting a Toughness 4 model, supercharging means your wound roll goes from a 3 plus to a 2 plus. Or if targeting a Toughness 8 model, your wound roll goes from a 5 plus to a 4 plus. And lastly, the multi melter. This too saw a boost in 9th edition, going from a heavy 1 to heavy 2 and its damage under halfway has been improved to D6 plus 2. Yikes. It is however 50 points to the most expensive of all the options. Being heavy 2 is a huge improvement, which means on average the 4 shots from the two of them, 2 are hitting, which with strength 8 AP minus 4, will turn most units into molten slag. Of course however, its 24 inch range will limit its effectiveness. But as mentioned at the start of the video, you could use spotted details as one of your regimental doctrines, increasing its range to 30 inches, which is a bit more palatable. For me, I usually reserve the multi multi for my tank commanders, and as alluded to earlier, I like to give my tank commanders all the nastiest options like the Laz Cannon, Multi Melter, and Hunter Killer Missile. That way, their Blitzit Skiller 3 Plus is taking as many hits as possible into the wound roll and taking advantage of their nasty AP and damage profile. So, for that, gives you a feel for how to equip the sponsor and weapons. I won't give a hard and fast recommendation as to what I think is best, as it should really depend on who your opposing army is and which turret weapons you've chosen. However, I'm personally a fan of giving my normal Lehman Russes with battle cannons three heavy bolters, and as said before, reserving las cannons, plasma cannons, and multi melders to my tank commanders. Also, I always try to apply the principle of a blast turret weapon paired with non blast sponsor weapons, and vice versa. Cool, so now onto the vehicle accessories. There are four options, all at five points. Let's start with the dozer blade. I love the idea of this and how cool it makes the model look, but I personally don't think it's a great choice. Improving your three attacks to weapon skill five plus on the charge isn't really going to set the world alight. And there are only isolated incidences where a Lehman Rush should be charging into melee. The track guards are actually a great choice, meaning your tank can always move as if it was on the top performance bracket. This can pay dividends towards the end of the game when your rust is all shot up. Remember its lowest profile is at moving a snail's pace of 4 inches, and if you're moving half to use grinding advance, you've got a whopping 2 inch move. The Ugga Array gives you a single reroll of a hit roll. This is basically saving you a command reroll, so one command point, and can warrant use on a must land las cannon shot. The Hunter Killer Missile is also super cool with a beefed up strength of strength 10 from a strength 8 in 8th edition. AP-2 and D6 damage is really strong, however you can only fire it once per battle. So you can probably guess that I'm going to suggest keeping these only for your tank commanders. Given on a normal rust, you're essentially just flipping a coin as to whether this will hit or not. And don't forget the pintor mounted weapons. 
Heavy Stubber costs 5 points and the Storm Bolter costs 3. They are both AP 0 strength 4, but Heavy Stubber is a heavy 3, whilst the Bolter is a rapid fire 2. But I personally always go with the Heavy Stubber due to its longer range of 36 inches. Right, so the vehicle accessories give some nice ways to further buff your tanks. I personally keep to tend my standard Lehman Russes pretty vanilla, but give my tank commanders all the accessories to really maximise their potential. A potential criticism of this approach is that I'm sinking a lot of points into two models, which run the risk of their loss blowing a massive hole in my army list. However, I've become pretty good at shielding them from harm early in the game for effective screening and presenting early game tactical threats. Scout Sentinel sitting on objective is a great way to do so. Rightio, so there you have it. My review on the Sponson weapons and tank accessories for Lehman Russ. As said, what to use depends on your opponent type and which turret weapon you've chosen. If you're wondering how to easily swap out the Sponson weapons, you can simply use blue tack or magnetize them. And I've got a how-to video on how to magnetize Sponson weapons and a link is here. So any questions or comments, let me know. And what is your preferred weapon layout? And if you feel like supporting me, every like, comment and subscribe really helps. If you're feeling super generous, you can join my Patreon platoon and a link is below. So my channel covers everything Astro Militarum, including hobby, tactics and lore. Thanks for watching. See you next time.